Hi everyone, my name is Deb Kemp. I'm the Economic Development Coordinator at Northern Beaches Council. And today is one of our series of ATO, ATO webinars um, about getting ready for tax time. So we've been running these every Tuesday lunchtime during August and September on a range of topics from starting your business, closing your business, digital options, um, managing your cash flow, which is today's topic, and also budgeting your commitments and home-based businesses. So all of these webinars are being recorded and we will be putting them up on our website. I'll send you the link after today's webinar and you can um, view the recording then at your leisure. So don't feel like you have to take lots of notes and hopefully you also got the, um, the handout with a bit of background information in advance of it, today's webinar. So I'll start now by handing over to Lyndon Regina from the ATO who's going to be your presenter today to talk a bit more about about the topic and to do the formal introduction. So I'll hand over now. Thanks Deb and thanks Northern Beaches Council. And I can see uh, there's a number of return attendees. So a big hello to you, great to have you back on board. So my name's Lyndon Regina and, and I'm proudly coming to you via the Australian Taxation Office. Uh, and a big thanks to the Northern Beaches City Council for your support. Um, certainly very interactive in the business economic space, so economic development space. So uh, uh, we are bringing you more webinars uh, throughout the upcoming weeks so stay tuned and love to see you back so look um, often we come to these types of forums and we think you know could have asked a question should have asked a question or maybe that question hasn't popped up into your mind just yet might have it pop into your mind over the weekend when you're mowing the lawn so do not hesitate email me okay I'll just pop my email address into the chat box now I'm more than happy to get any of your questions answered alternatively you can uh, send your questions through to Northern Beaches Council and I'd be more than happy to receive them via that channel so look, plenty's happened uh, over the last six months, hasn't it? You know, I realised I've been, I've been, uh, I've been, you know, COVID bound, uh, working from home for the last twenty three weeks. It's crazy, isn't it? I wonder if you're in the same boat. Don't hesitate to come down through the chat box and, you know, let me know what you're going through and how your experiences are and, and whether they're negative or positive. Um, I will speak a little bit about um, the trends that we've been noticing coming out of the community uh, through telephone calls that we've been making to our small business community across Australia. But for the minute, look, I've placed a, a big chunk of information into the chat box for you to digest. It's in relation to all the support that the Australian Taxation Office has on offer uh, to be able to help guide and nurture you through this process. Um, we can, you know, tailor payment arrangements. We're looking at remitting general interest charges, remitting penalties, deferring lodgements. Um, just a quick note of the early release to superannuation that's coming up. The close date of that's going to be the 24th of um, September. So it's not far away. So if you're an individual or a sole trader and you're experiencing financial difficulties or hardship, um, maybe you could read the eligibility criteria on ato.gov.au. On the landing page, you're going to see an orange ribbon. Um, it's got the words COVID-19. Click on that um, and then your menu is going to pop up on the left-hand side and you'll be able to see all the support um, mechanisms that we've got there in relation to cash flow boost, JobKeeper. And don't forget the face of JobKeeper is going to change as of the 28th of September. So again, a lot of changes coming up and it's important to be on the front foot of those changes. Um, now, if you are experiencing the financial difficulties or serious hardship, allow me just to place this into the chat box for you now. Don't hesitate. It's all about being able to reach out to us. Okay, so that's all the info coming through. Please don't hesitate, send your, your questions via the chat box. I usually keep one eye on the chat box and I keep one eye on the presentation. So I'm more than happy to get those questions answered throughout the webinar. Alternatively, if you just feel like emailing me, that's not a drama in the slightest. All right, so um, today, look, we're, we're going to talk everything cash flow, but just for the minute, let's just take 30 seconds um, to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, waters and the community. Look, I'd like to pay my respects to them, uh, their cultures, elders, past and present. 
So today we're going to talk cash flow. I'm unable to provide you with specific advice, but I certainly can provide you with general advice, okay? Um, and I will be asking you a few questions throughout the session. And as I said, don't be afraid to come down via that chat box and, you know, um, ask your questions, perhaps give uh, a bit of an insight in relation to what your business has been experiencing during uh, COVID-19. Um, because all the intelligence we gather, we I, may, I ensure it goes up to our executives um, because they're very much, um, they want eyes on the ground and feet on the ground in relation to how we can better support you. Um, and, and especially coming out of COVID-19, what can we do to make your experience easier? And how can we do that in a more timely and efficient manner? So they're the sort of questions that we're asking ourselves. So let's look at the package. So um, the importance of cash flow. So cash flow, it's all about money in and money out. If I was to simplify it, that's what it's all about. But you want money to flow in faster than what you want it to be going out in expenses, okay? And one of the ways that you can do that is looking at your debtors and your, cred and your creditors. So can you lessen your invoicing time from 30 days to 14 days to enable that cash flow to come in faster and then pay your suppliers over a 30 day period? Is that a possibility? Can I plant that seed for you? Um, so, you know, Sarah here, she's got her cleaning business. She needs to keep buying supplies to be able to keep doing her cleaning business. Um, so she's spending money whilst buying those supplies, but um, her, um, debtors aren't paying up as fast as what she'd like them to pay. So we've got quite a few thoughts around that and you will hear me mention that throughout the package today. So 65% of small businesses found that managing cash flow was probably one of their biggest concerns. Let me give you another stat off the top of my head. 60% of small business, businesses fail in the first three years of trading. And you know what? That usually comes down to record keeping. If you don't know what's coming into your business and going out of your business, um, you're flying blind, literally. So at the end of the day, it's really important to keep good records. Um, and it's really important to have an understanding of what's happened in your business. So you can actually forecast forward as to how you can change. What can you do to be able to change um, or turn that around? to make sure there's more cash coming in and less expenses going out. And we'll chat about that more throughout the package. So talking on record keeping, I've got a, a little link that I prepared earlier. I allow me to pop that into the chat box for you now um, because it's got lots of ideas in relation to, especially our record keeping evaluation tool. So that's a tool um, that you would place in the information of how you're currently keeping your records. And once you establish how you're currently keeping your records, this tool can come back and provide you little tips and hints in relation to how you can improve those processes. So what is cash flow? It's cash surplus and positive cash, which we call black cash. Okay, so that's actually cash that we've got on hand. Then we've got cash deficit or negative cash, and that's red cash. And that's the cash, that's the, the red you don't want, the black you want heaps of. And that's really simplifying it at the end of the day. And that will align with what your tax professionals are saying to you, that you want more cash surplus and positive cash flowing in rather than cash flowing out of your business. So today we'll talk um, cash flowing in and out. We're going to analyse your cash flow. Um, we've got seven great, really short, sharp tips to be able to give you. And I'm going to plant lots of seeds throughout those tips so hopefully you'll be able to walk away from today's session feeling really armed um, with the education that you've received today to be able to look at your business, drill down, never be afraid to drill down into your business and find out where am I going really, really well and where can I improve? And obviously we'll chat more about tracking your cash flow. So let's do um, a little bit of an example. Let's go back to Sarah and her cleaning business. So Sarah's business has had a few cleaning contracts on the go. Each contract requires her to purchase cleaning materials prior to doing the job, which she's got to pay uh, for on the day of purchase. And as you can imagine, that can be quite hard. So she, Sarah gives her customers 30 days to pay 
after the invoice is issued. And, you know, in all honesty, and we're seeing this right now, customers are taking definitely up to those 30 days to pay. So I'm sure you can align with those thoughts and feelings. So at the moment, um, Sarah's um, bank balance, look, it was 4,000, okay? Um, so on the uh, 27th of July, she spends um, 2,500 um, for contract uh, two. Sorry, I missed contract one. That was $400 and that was done on the 8th of July. The contract two, um, contract two is she was, you know, she's paid, she needs to be paid $800 uh, to be able to help her cover her um, cash flow within her bank account. Um, so that is actually going to take her bank balance to $1,100. She, look, she then receives the money for contract one, taking her bank balance up to the $1,900. Um, and she purchased um, materials for contract three in mid-August. So Sarah's bank balance is reduced by $50. So it's now $1,850. She invoices for contract two shortly after, and she can expect $8,000 within the next 30 days. So Sarah's been operating with a positive cash flow to this point. Before she receives payment for contract two, she needs to purchase materials for contract four. Look, it's going to be a big contract um, and the materials cost $3,700, taking her bank balance uh, to $1,850. So Sarah is now operating with a cash deficit or a, a negative cash flow, red cash we'll call it. Um, so if contract two pays on time, she will again have a cash surplus of a bank balance of $6,150. So contract three is due to be paid in the last week of September, uh, further increasing her balance to $6,450. So contract four, look, it's due to be paid in October. So Sarah can definitely see there's periods of both positive cash flow and negative cash flow. And just remember, when you're mapping your cash flow, you record when you actually receive the cash. Okay, that's a really important point. In reality, over this three-month period, look, Sarah will have other commitments aside from contract materials. Uh, you know, like she needs to pay her um, quarterly goods and tax um, taxes, you know, her GST. Um, she may have, or she's got a business loan. Um, she's got insurance. She's got fuel costs. Look, the list goes on. You know how this plays out. So it's really important that you spend time getting down into the detail of mapping your cash flow. So it's as accurate as it possibly can be. Once you've mapped out your cash flow, look, you have a clear line of sight um, across the cash coming into your business. Um, and when you have the cash flow, um, and obviously when you've got a positive cash flow and when you've got a negative cash flow. So it's all about that lovely visualization of being able to see cash in, cash out. Well, how can I get more cash in and how can I let more, um, let, you know, less cash go, I suppose. Um, all right, so look, let's look at the cash flow canvas. And look, this is only a resource type document. It is a PDF that's going to be sent out into your handout um, today that Deb would have sent out. Um, more of a visualization than anything. So there are a lot of cash flow type spreadsheets available on the internet. Um, perhaps if you've got a tax professional engaged, they may be able to supply you with an electronic version uh, in relation to mapping your cash flow. But this is just gonna give, it's gonna plant the seed. It's gonna give you a bit of insight in relation to how a cash flow canvas um, can work. So this slide, look, it's just detailing in regards to what it looks like and, and how you need to be able to read this and having that comfortability of being able to read it. So basically what this cash flow canvas is going to ask you is what is my cash position? Um, how much do I need for my tax and super commitments? How much is available to spend? Does my business have enough to spend on myself and others? And is my business improving? So these are the key questions. So before we look at each of the four key questions, let's explore all the parts of the canvas. So you name and identify your canvas by completing the top portion of the review canvas. Um, and then you're able to look backwards in time against perhaps last year's figures. So you can do that comparison. So a forecast canvas is used for your current figures or for the figures over the um, coming months or year. Now, a plan canvas, look, it's just for planning, okay? 
You test different scenarios in the canvas just to see how they're going to work out. You select the time frame the canvas is for such as you know yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, or cross these out and put your own time frames in. Um, it's all up to you. It's how you want to use this cash flow canvas. So when is the date that you filled out the canvas so it's nice and easy to identify later? Now, the opening balance is whatever you've currently got in your business bank account. You know, all accountants will, will tell you it's all about the opening balance. You've got to work on that opening balance. And um, if you choose to ignore it, guess what? It's going to come up and bite again because you're going to have to look back to be able to forecast forward. So the opening balance has got a, a large play um, in your business. So a forecast canvas... Um, Look, it's, um, it's all about time frames and it's all about perhaps your business might be seasonal. It might be um, a retail business. So you're reconciling regularly. You might be a contractor. You might be doing your books, you know, um, once a fortnight or once a month. Um, so this is where we're going to look at the cash in and cash out sections. So the cash in boxes allow you to split your income into different types. Gather your cash in figures from your cash receipts records. The cash out section. Look, that provides boxes which allows you to split your expenses into the major categories. Gather your cash out figures from your cash payments and your wages records, perhaps if you're an employer. The cash surplus section. Look, this shows you where you've got your actual cash surplus. And the available to spend section. It's got to be the most beautiful section of the whole canvas. How much have you got to spend? Because that's the big question, isn't it? The yellow sections itemise your regular tax and super financial commitments and the sections of the canvas, well, they're pretty well named, they're you know, pretty stock standard. Um, gather your figures regularly. Ideally, do your, re your regular records, for example, as I was saying, retail, you know, daily or weekly contractors, fortnightly or monthly. And I'm going to emphasise this. This is where we see a lot of businesses fall down because they don't keep regular records. And look, life is busy. If you're anything like me, you know, between um, working full time, having a family, having outside commitments, social life, yeah, well, that's pretty nil at the moment, thanks to COVID. We've all got commitments, you know, we've all got, especially those extended family commitments as well, you know, especially if someone's not, not well in your family, you need to be able to provide a little bit of care for them. Um, so you're not, where I'm going with this, you're not going to remember in three or six months time in relation to what something was. Unless it was big, chances are you're not gonna remember. So this is why running a successful business and being smarter and not working harder is the key behind um, your, your cash flow within your business. All right, so what is my cash flow position? Let's have a closer look at this. So we're going to revisit Sarah and her cleaning business. So Sarah just finished a weekly record keeping. She's now gathering her figures to work out her financial commitments. She's, she's going to use the forecast canvas to record her current figures as she completes the top of the canvas, including the $1,000 opening balance. Now, from her cash receipts records, she gathers the payments received in the week, so the cash in. So that was that $2,000, um, sorry, the $2,200. Um, the GST on the sales was 200. Uh, she makes her total cash in excluding GST, the 2000. So that's sitting there. Um, then she's got uh, the cost of materials for the $55. She paid the $5 GST on that. The $800 um, is the, wa the wages. So um, she, that's more of it, you know, you cash out. Um, the super amount came to $87 because she chooses to put her tax, her pay as you go withholding of 113 and her super of $87 away in a separate bank account. Um, so Sarah's total cash out excluding GST is $1,050. Now to calculate the cash surplus, she subtracts the total cash out excluding GST from the total cash in excluding GST. So this shows that Sarah's cash surplus for the week equates to $950. Um, and this shows at this point in time, Sarah's working from a positive cash flow balance. Um, now, look, just a, a quick note with uh, today's webinar, it is being recorded. So if you're happy to be on the recording with your webcam, you're more than welcome to stay. Um, however, if you want to turn your webcam off, I just thought it would be fairer to mention that uh, 
the session is being recorded. So I'll leave that choice up to you. All right, so look, let's look at um, question two. How much do I need for my tax and super commitments? And this is super important um, because this is what a lot of businesses don't actually do. Um, so firstly, we estimate the business uh, t income tax and we do this by multiplying the cash surplus figure excluding GST by 25%. So we're going to arrive at $238. So this is an estimated tax rate. So the yellow section has a plus or a minus against each box, which helps you um, on how to do your actual calculation. So let's go through it now. So GST on sales was 200, minus your GST on purchases, which is the $5, and um, that comes to 195, which, which pay, um, your pay to go withholding comes in, Super that you've got and put away is the 87, um, and then you plus income or any um, company tax, which comes out at $238. So the total amount equates to $633, and this goes on the right hand side just here. Okay, now the reason why I'm just going to highlight this aspect is during COVID, we've seen a lot of early release to superannuation. I constantly get the question, Lyndon, do I have to put away my super? Well, let me put this to you. For those people that have needed to um, withdraw uh, their early release of superannuation, um, if you hadn't put away your super, well, you wouldn't have had that money there in the first place. And look, touch wood, and I literally do touch wood when I say this, I hope never in our lives, lifetimes we're ever going to see um, something like COVID-19 again. But we don't know. The earth is becoming more and more populated. And I mean, I'm not one to go in with scare tactics. I'm more of a positive queen rather than a drama or a negative queen. So at the end of the day, always, well, as my mum used to always say, it's always save for a rainy day. So by putting your, your super away, um, it's going to enable you to be able to have some sort of fallback, some sort of nest egg. Now, in relation to your tax, why do you put your tax away throughout the year? Because... Tax and super, meeting your taxation and superannuation obligations, it's all about tax on the go, okay? Tax on the go is really important to be able to have a constant visualisation of what's happening in your business. Now, um, I will be talking about the ATO app a little bit down the track, and by the end of the webinar, you're probably going to be sick of me saying, you know, tax on the go. But it's true. If you do regular re record keeping and you've got a regular visualisation of what's happening with your cash flowing in and flowing out, it's going to give you um, that, that sense of stability in relation to when you lodge your income tax return at the end of the financial year, if you've already put your tax away into a separate bank account, um, you're going to have the tax to pay for when you lodge your tax return. Now, a great way to do this is by pay-as-you-go instalments. So there's a system within the ATO. Yes, it's called P-A-Y-G-I, pay-as-you-go instalments. And we will estimate, judging on your previous year's um, figures or judging on benchmarks, and I'm going to touch on benchmarks in a minute, in relation to how much you can expect to um, the average income that you're going to earn for an industry type and the average expense that you're going to earn for an industry type. This is going to give you the power to be able to work out how much tax do I really need to put away. Um, the ATO app has got, actually I'll put the link into the chat box now because we will go into more detail and just um, shortly down the track. But the ATO app, and for those who have um, attended previously, you know how excited I get with my app. But um, the ATO app is a great little space for you to be able to um, access tax rates. So you may, have, you may know how much you've earned for the week, the fortnight, the month, but do you know how much tax to put away? So don't work it out, sit there pulling out your hair, how do I do this? Just get onto the ATO app, go to the tax rates calculator um, and plug in what you've earned and we're going to return with what tax, the amount of tax that you should be putting away. Because moving forward into your business, if you've got to move forward with a tax debt hanging over your head, you know, that hurts. And we don't want small businesses to hurt. We want you to be ahead of your game. You know the old saying, hashtag game on. So we want you to be across all of that before you get stung. Because moving forward with a tax debt, it's a horrible feeling. And, and you know, the less worry and stress that you, you um, experience at the moment, the, the better. So 
Let's talk about how much we can spend, okay? I'm gonna walk you through that right now. So Sarah adds the cash surplus of $950 to the opening balance of 1,000. So that's all the money that she had on hand. She goes and subtracts the estimated income or company tax of $633. So Sarah's got $1,317 available to spend. So here's what you need to ask yourself. Is my available to spend enough in line with my expectations? And it's a good question to constantly and regular, regularly ask yourself. Never be afraid to ask yourself the big questions. So to know this, you need to switch gears and think ahead to what money will be coming in and going out in the future. So let's analyse her cash flow position a little bit more. Let's work out Sarah's net asset figure. So the net asset figure is what you've got left when you take the total of all your business assets and you minus all your business liabilities. This will help you answer question four super soon. So the first step is to allocate amounts to the asset and the liability boxes. So cash to owner are personal payments to yourself. Um, Sarah wants to pay herself $800. And by the way, look, we're going to record assets in the black and liabilities in the red. Remember, black is good. Red is bad. So cash at the bank, look, is represented by the cash you've got in the bank after you take out the cash to owner or the amount you want to pay yourself. It's shown as a negative figure. So if you don't have cash in the bank and you've perhaps maybe got an overdraft, it's shown as a positive figure um, as if you've had hard cash in your business account all along. So Sarah wants to pay herself that $800 from the available to spend amount, which, um, is, which is coming out of 1,317. Minus that by 800, this is only gonna leave $517 cash at the bank. So st stock is the amount of stock that you've got on hand and her cleaning stock on hand's worth $250. Debt is, well, we all know what debtors are, don't we? Money that you've got to pay. Um, she's got $1,460 in money yet to come in from her customers. Creditors, well, that's going to be the stock that you're yet to pay for. So the, the cost of the stock Sarah has yet to pay for is actually $2,000. Now, the assets, well, the assets um, is the amount that your business owned, owes, such as... Um, you know, um, perhaps you've got a company car, and in this case, Sarah does have a company car. So um, that's going to be, if she pays $153 a week, that's $8,000 over 52 weeks. So loans is the amount owing to the business in loans, and a business um, loan is $400 um, per week. So starting with the cash at bank, the overdraft figure, you follow the plus and minuses in the section or plus the black and minus the red figures to work out the net asset figure. So Sarah's business net, at, uh, net uh, asset position is sitting at $20. So let's bring that up now. Okay. So having a negative um, net asset position means Sarah will want to revisit these figures and look, she wants to see how she can change it, how she can bring her business into a, a positive cash flow position. So the most likely area in small business that she would adjust is probably the personal payments. So if Sarah reduced that amount to 700, her net asset figure would be $80. So look, it's not much, but at least it's not a negative. It's not red, it's black, yay. Um, so this will affect her lifestyle and she's gonna go with that personal planned items that she was you know, trying to save for. So there are a number of areas that Sarah can look at to improve here, and we're going to look at that super soon. So let's talk about how your business um, is tracking. How's it improve? Is it improving? Okay. So the, to answer this question, you need to compare the net figure with two different time periods. For example, comparing a canvas for last month against comparing a canvas for this month well, that's going to be able to give you, again, that visualisation, what is happening in your business. So tracking your cash flow, look, it's all about profitability and being able to continue that. How can I be more profitable? How can I spend less and earn more? That's the aim of the game, isn't it? That's why we're doing it. I mean, you know, obviously I'd like to see small businesses enjoy what they're doing, but not all of us enjoy what we're doing. We, we, we do it for the money. 
Um, so this is why it's important to be able to drill down into your business. Find out where are you going really, really well and where can you improve? All right, so um, another thing that I'm going to add, it's really important to, if you can, seek professional advice. See what others are doing in, in their businesses. What's working for them? And what necessarily isn't working for them doesn't mean it may not work for you. So just keep your ears open. See what you can do. Um, don't be afraid to have those types of, of conversations. So perhaps you can uh, make changes to improve your cash flow in a timely manner. You know, make informed decisions. Gather and analyse comprehensive information to prepare reports. Um, review past performances, um, make plans to improve your business, use reliable financial details to track your business, to obviously reach your financial um, goals. So as I keep saying, don't be afraid to ask yourself, what's working well, what's not working well? Did you meet your budget? That's a constant conversation, isn't it, to yourself? Have I met my budget? Um, do you have enough cash? Are your expenses in line with your expectation? And has your performance improved? So look, um, after this slide, we're going to go back to uh, Deb Camp at the Northern Beaches City Council uh, for a bit of an update of what's happening with the council. But just before we do, let's touch on benchmarks. So I've sat in auditing seats in the compliance spaces within the ATO for a number of years. And one of the biggest things that um, we, we see is over um, spending too much and not earning enough. Okay, so also people lodge their income tax returns and they're going to declare all their expenses, necessarily declare all their income. And that may not be deliberate. That may be because you just don't know, you don't, you don't have the visualisation of what's coming in and what's going out. So if you're thinking about starting up a small business, head to benchmarks on ato.gov.au Pretty much 98, 99% of industry types are included in the, in the benchmarks. Um, and this is literally the ATO Bible. And the reason why I say that is because when your tax return goes, is lodged, it goes through data risk models, right? And we will pick up if your expenses are more than what your income are. But as a startup, what you can do, you can go into benchmarks and you can find out what's the average income that you can expect to earn and what's the average expenses that you're going to expect to, to, you know, to go out of your business? And they're important, decent questions to be able to ask yourself. Um, and also, it's a great way of, of improving. So you're able. So if you are spending too much, drill down further. What, what, where are you spending the money? Can you pull that back? And this is what we're going to talk about after we um, cross over to Deb. But we're going to talk about how you can drill down the types of questions you can ask yourself. And in relation to, you know, st I'll just give you a quick, um, a quick snippet, staffing. Staffing can make or break your business, okay? So benchmarks is a fabulous uh, space to be able to find out, are you outside the benchmarks? If so, drill down, find out why you're outside of those benchmarks. And also if your industry type isn't offered on, on our benchmarks um, site on ato.gov.au. I'll just pop the address in now so it's nice and easy for you because I know it off the top of my head. Um, forward slash benchmarks. Typing and talking isn't my forte. I think who's been on these webinars before knows that. So there we go. If you head there, use that. Use it regularly. Check in. Don't ever be afraid to check in um, and find out how you're faring with your business and also if your business isn't listed as our in our benchmarking head here ibis so ibis has got all the different industry benchmarks um, internationally in relation to, and it will drill down to australian stats as well you just need to choose that you're in australia and it'll give you those um average um income and expenses for your business so look that's where i'm gonna stop I'm going to cross back over to, to our dear Deb and find out what's happening in the Northern Beaches Council space. Um, what are you doing at the moment, Deb? And what's coming up? I'm excited to hear. 
Thanks, Lyndon. And look, certainly that benchmarking information, I think is really valuable. It's something we hear all the time from businesses, just trying to gauge where they, where they sit with other businesses. So certainly encourage you to tap into, into that. Uh, we also on our own website um, subscribe to Economy ID, and that's a really useful way of benchmarking just in terms of the business makeup of the Northern Beaches. How many cafes are there in your area if you're looking at starting a cafe or something else? So again, I think there's a lot of data sets out there we should be tapping into. So just going back to what we've been doing during, during COVID to support our business community, well, Northern Beaches Council was quite quick to put out a business support package um, following declaration of the pandemic in late March. Um, the initial thing was trying to reduce where we could some of those overhead costs to councils, so particularly fees which apply to council also we had a hardship policy for business rates and also residential rates so i encourage you to have a look at, at the business support package we have extended things like outdoor dining out to the end of the year um, and some of the other hardship policies too um, but another key role for council was really just trying to keep the business community informed and connected so we've been putting out fortnightly business newsletters and again i think a lot of you already subscribed to that um, but if you haven't i'll be putting out a link and encourage you to look at that that gives you information about webinars that we're running as council but also connects you through to state government where they have grant programs available and other um, webinars including things like business connect program which is the state government business support program delivered into our local area we've also been trying to look at some of the kind of positive stories coming out from the northern beaches and we did a series um, showcasing five businesses who've successfully pivoted during COVID and I think we're trying to get some of the positive stories and and information that we can out to the community to, to give a bit of inspiration um, the other thing that we are now looking in the lead up to Christmas is running a digital marketing program for for a limited number of businesses to help them connect with their customers and um, whether that's through improved pop, um, customer service and increasing their online presence so again if this is something that's of interest to your business let me know we'll be putting out an EOI for that process hopefully in the next next few weeks um, and we've also got small business month coming up next month so we we're looking at um, running an event probably towards the end of the month which will be a a higher profile webinar hoping to lock in a, a keynote economist um, and small business speaker for that event so again we'll be putting out details in our next newsletter so so stay tuned for that and uh, I think I'll hand back over to Lyndon now to continue with the presentation. Well that sounds very exciting and don't be afraid to reach out to the ATO if you'd like a, a small business keynote speaker for uh, that uh, celebration at the end of uh, October for New South Wales Small Business Month. Tell you something, it's gearing up to be an awesome month. There's going to be plenty happening around uh, New South Wales and I'm certainly getting myself very much involved. So uh, I look forward to bringing a lot more tax and super information your way. All right, so look, let's talk the seven tips. This is what business is all about. So it's all about pricing, volume, debtors, your assets, how much are you spending, your inventory and staffing. So let's talk pricing. So with pricing, you need to, can you focus on your more profitable customers, products and services? So what's really working well in your business? And whatever's working really well in your business, can you perhaps concentrate more on that and concentrate less on what's not working? Okay. Um, and again, it comes down to being able to look back. Um, if you've kept good records, you're going to see what products and services are working and what products and services aren't, what's not moving. Okay, we've seen a lot of that through COVID-19 in relation to uh, businesses really drilling down and finding out what's in particular not working. Um, and they're stepping aside from what's not working and they're ramping up what is working. Can you increase the value that you deliver? So can you make your product or service better? Can you, um, you know, add a few additional requirements into your product and service to make it look more attractive against your competitors? Um, and also, can you change your prices? So this is a big one. We, we've seen a lot of uh, changing of, of pricing throughout COVID. A lot of businesses have dropped their pricing and they're working harder just to be able to make that sale. Um, a lot of businesses have hiked their prices. Let's look at transport. 
So transports hike their, their, um, their rates. I'm not saying all transport firms, but a lot of transports have. Um, and it's not a bad thing. And they're able to do that because at the moment, as we know through COVID, um, transport is the backbone of Australia. It's what's filling our shelves. I mean, look at that whole toilet paper debacle. So um, can you change your prices to be able to match your customers and, and also to be able to compete with your competitors? So it's where great questions to be able to ask yourself. Volume, how can you increase the potential amount of customers? Is that gonna come via um, your sales and your marketing? How are you doing your sales and marketing? Um, are you using cheaper alternatives? And if you are, are they working for you? Would it be worth spending a bit more money in your sales and marketing um, areas uh, to be able to boost your, your reputation or, or, or your visual throughout the community that you're trying to target? Um, can you sell into a new market or territory? And that's a great little, um, that, that, that's a great little idea because as we've gained, we've seen through COVID, so many businesses have shifted online. And allow me to give you a little bit of a positive spin on this. So we're seeing a lot of new startups happening during COVID and they're all starting up, majority of them, from home. So they're turning, a lot of people have been looking at their hobbies They've been saying, well, can I make a bit of money out of this? And how can I do this? So we've seen a lot of hobbies turn into um, a small business um, and they've been running it from home to be able to lower their overheads. Um, so again, you know, you, you're looking at selling into a new market or, or a territory, whether that be online or whether that be in your local community uh, in relation to how you're marketing your business. Can you increase products or services, right? Where we, are, where we go with this is um, what products are selling? Can you increase them? So if you can increase them, is it worth changing your pricing on that? Just something to think about. I'll leave that seed with you. And can you improve your sales processes? Now, what we mean about that, how are you going about selling your product or your service? So um, are you doing it online? Are you doing it via newsletter? Are you sending out, out, out emails? Um, is it between family and friends, word of mouth, reputation? Um, see what's working for you. And whatever's working, perhaps you could, um, you could look at, at you know, making that a, a, a more attractive option to be able to make a little bit more money. Your debtors. Oh, debtors. People hate talking about debt. I know I do, but look, it is a fact of life. Invoicing earlier. It's the biggest thing. So we remember Sarah's cleaning business. So if Sarah was to change her invoicing from 30 days to 14 days, that means her cash is going to flow in quicker. And then she may keep that 30 day um, supplier um, arrangement. So that means that her money's going to be going out in a, in a uh, more sort of, you know, a slower fashion, but her money is going to be coming in in a faster fashion. So the cash flow wins faster and the money going out, the cash out, is slower. So perhaps you might be in a position with your suppliers that you're on 14-day terms. Can you extend that out to 30-day terms? And can you bring your invoicing terms into 14 days, maybe seven days? Maybe you might want to look at um, early payment. Maybe you might want to look at, um, you know, penalising. I mean, it's not, I know it doesn't sound very nice, but... Maybe you might penalise for late payment. They're all ideas, aren't they? Um, and follow-up. I know follow-up's painful, but follow-up is a big part of being able to get your money in through the door. How are you doing that follow-up? Can you do it in a more savvy, succinct way? Are you able to, you know, do a regular email follow-up? Do you have to make that telephone call and, and spend 15, 20 minutes of your day um, with your clients? You might want to do that. That's completely up to you. But these are the types of ideas that you can look at to, uh, to cut down on your costs. Now, e-invoicing, have you heard of it? So e-invoicing is when one accounting software talks to the other accounting software, right? So your accounting software is talking to your client's accounting software. So what happens, instead of having to actually physically sit at a keyboard, do the invoice, fold it, pop it into an envelope, lick the stamp. Well, actually, you don't have to lick stamps anymore. But, you know, put the stamp on the envelope, lick the envelope, and send it out via snail mail. It all takes time. So with e-invoicing, if you've got an accounting software, see if it's compatible 
um, to A, do e-invoicing, and you'd be able to talk to your software providers about this. Or um, perhaps, um, you know, you can um, look into incorporating e-invoicing into your accounting software. So what this basically means, where I'm going with this, if you stick with the stock standard invoicing process that you know we've known forever and a day, that can actually equate to, to quite a large sum over the year um, or over the period that you're measuring it compared with e-invoicing. So look at that, $9.18, that's a saving of $21.64, I think, off the, or 69 cents off the top of my head. Um, so instead of doing you know, PDF invoices, um, you know, which is coming in at 2767. And this is just all research that we've done and we've, we've spoken to a lot of small businesses about it. But maybe this is where you can actually save money. So assets, what have you got on hand that you're not using? It's a good question, isn't it? So whatever you're not lease, using, can you lease it out? Can you sell it maybe? Can you get that money back in for that, um, for that asset that you're not using? Maybe upgrading your equipment and your tools to be able to run your business might in the long run save you money because it might be a quicker process uh, to be able to, to use. Another thought, have you thought about refinancing? So look, I'll, I'll be the first to say, I'm, I'm happy to put my hand up to say that, you know, we've certainly looked at the refinance, refinancing option with our small business and with our mortgage. Um, and there's some great rates out there. If you're prepared to ask those big questions, woof, you will be pleasantly surprised, especially at the moment. The, uh, the banks have become very competitive with each other. So that might be another option that you could consider as well. Um, expenses. So we've kind of talked about this already, but it's all about reducing the base. I love that song. Reducing your overheads, okay? So look at your business. Where are you spending your money? Where can you tighten the belt as such? Where can you not spend as much money so you've got a bit more money in your top pocket? Um, and obviously, you know, reduce your discretionary spending. So do you really need those seven coffees per day? Or do you really need those seven coffees per week? I probably should say. I'm hanging for coffee. I've only had two cafe coffees in the last 23 weeks. So I can't wait to head to the Northern Beaches Council and um, or council area and head into one of your absolutely luscious cafes. Um, I reckon you've got some of the best cafes around the country. Um, so yeah, I will get up there and I will get a coffee because I'll clearly, I clearly, I'm needing one because I'm talking about it right now. But look at reducing your overheads. What can you do? What, you know, can you, can you renegotiate with your electricity companies, your telephone bills, um, you know, your gas bills? What about your suppliers? Are they charging too much? Check out with other people. What are they spending to be able to run their business? Um, and could you tap into their suppliers? Um, so again, don't be afraid to ask the questions. Inventory. It's always a good one with inventory. People don't realise... Um, the extent, I mean, look, some, I'll say some people, because not all people, a lot of people are actually really across this and really, really good at it. But reducing stock, have less stock on hand. And the reason why I say that is because it's going to move faster. So you buy it, you sell it, beautiful. Cash in or cash out, cash in really, really quickly because you're going to sell it. Um, improve the terms with your suppliers. I've already touched on this a bit, but can you blow that out to 30 days of, of payment? Don't know. Um, and what about that stock that just doesn't move? Get rid of it. What's the good in having it? It's just, you know, eventually you, you just got to hoard a whole heap of infantry there that isn't going to shift. Um, and amending your ordering process. So um, talk to your suppliers. How can you do that more efficiently? Um, that's going to be less cost for you. I'm not sure how you're doing it right now, but Drill down and see how much it's actually costing you for your ordering process. Now, staffing. Oh, as I was saying, staffing, it can make or break your business. It really, really can. Um, what are you doing for you? If you've got staff, what are you doing for your staff? Are they happy? Do you maybe have two really strong personalities that are working with each other and, and you know, perhaps um, customers are feeling that when they're coming through the door? Um, can you change that by any, by any means or ways? Um, can you employ a certain type of staff? Are you looking for a certain trait in a staff member to be able to fit into your business? 
Um, because you, as you know, staffing will either send customers out the door or bring what you want. Um, and obviously matching your staffing levels to your demand. Sorry, excuse me. So when I talk about matching staffing levels to your demand, is your business seasonal or is it all year round? Um, do you get more customers in in the morning or do you get more customers in, in the afternoon? Um, is your uh, selling rate higher on a weekend than what it is during the week? So these are the things that you need to um, break it down um, and see where you know, less staffing or more staffing is going to be a little bit more advantageous. And obviously increasing utilisation. That's the really important one. Are your staff doing what they need to be doing for the time that you're paying them? So that's another thing to actually look at and sit down with your staff members and say, okay, how do you think you can better your day? And also dangle the carrot theory. If you, if, you know, if we, if we reach this sale, you know, this percentage of sales per month, this is our goal, this is our target. If we reach that, what are you going to be able to do for your staff for reaching that? Let your staff do, do the work for you. Okay, so look, we, we've spoken about um, forecasting. We've talked about how much that you're going to need to put away for your tax and your super obligations. We've chatted around the importance of being able to put your super away because, you know, I think COVID really has really spelt that out. Um, and we've also looked at the importance of putting your tax away throughout the year. Um, and obviously having black cash and not red cash, okay? Or, or having black cash and no cash is probably a better example to be able to give you. So there's your quick snapshots seven quick tips on how to improve your business. It's all about adopting a good cash flow management. Ha seeing, don't be afraid to open up your eyes and have a look. See what's going on in your business. Map out your cash flow. Look at perhaps an, an appropriate accounting software. Investigate that e-invoicing. Calculate your tax in your super, separate your GST and have a full view of your cash flow. Now, when we talk separating your GST, I have a number of businesses that, you know, are, are always asking me, um, Lyndon, do I need to have a separate bank account? And my first answer is yes. If you're in business, you need separate bank accounts. The reason why I'm going to give you two spins here. The first spin is that I could ask you, so how long do you spend at the end of every month highlighting, getting your big yellow highlighter out um, and highlighting what's business, what's private, what's business, what's private? How boring. What a waste of time. So if you were to have a business bank account, um, and you can have a few, you can have a GST holding account, um, you can have pay as you go withholding accounts, you can have your super, so all different sorts of accounts. You know, you can do your, your own pay as you go instalments. You can put your own tax away into your own accounts if that's what you prefer to do so you're not going to get a debt once you lodge your income tax returns. And the second spin on this, as an auditor, now I'm to put my hat on, I don't want to see what's going on in your private life if you get audited until I ask you. Okay, so all I'm going to ask you for is your business bank statements. And, and when I see that, I just want to see what's business. I don't want to see what's going on in your private life because chances are if we can work it all off, we'll work it all out on your business bank statements, um, chances are that will be it. Unless, you know, there's a personal living expense issue of um, you're earning $22,000 a year, your spouse doesn't work, you've got four kids in private school and you've got a couple of um, luxury cars parked out the front connected to some uh, very delicious yachts um, and you've, you're living in a McMansion. That's when I'm probably going to ask a few questions. But the importance is of having those separate bank accounts. And nowadays, banks, if you've got the banking ad, a, app, Ask your bank, does the app alert me when I've been paid? I know a lot of the banking apps are doing that nowadays. So you've, if you were to have the ATO app on your phone, for example, um, and you were to have your business banking app on your phone and you've got that um, clear visual of what's going on and how much money is being held. Sorry, I have a frog in my throat today. Um, so look, at the end of the day, we, we, we are always carrying this. This is a constant, okay? And if it's not a constant for you, bless. I love that. 
I love going back to the olden days. Sometimes I wish I did, but I don't mind this because I've got my whole life on this. So I can actually go into my ATO app. I can see how much income's come in. I can see the expenses that have gone out. I can actually record my business related kilometers um, and I can take photos of my receipts. Now, if I regularly back up side of the app, um, it just means that um, I can actually see what's going on. The data is going to go into the cloud. If I'm a sole trader, data is going to come down from the cloud. It's going to automatically pre-fill your income tax return. No more tearing your hair out of thinking, where does all that go into a tax return? Um, if you're a partnership, a company or a trust, yes, you can still use this. Um, all that's going to happen is it'll, the data will come down from the cloud in an Excel spreadsheet format. So you're able to actually send that off to your accountant. All right, so look, the ATO are everywhere. And I say that with a smile. We're across Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn, uh, lots of how-tos on YouTube. Or you might be just one of those people that likes to give us a call. So if you are, please don't hesitate to follow us on our social media platforms. We've, um, our assistant commissioners and our deputy commissioners are very proactive. Uh, in regards to uh, posting all the latest and greatest in tax information. So I'm constantly um, checking my social media platforms when I first wake up in the morning um, at a uh, crazy hour. But at least I know I'm getting out of bed and I'm going to be on the forefront and I'm going to win that day over um, because I know exactly what's happening in the tax and super spaces. Um, so don't be afraid to follow us. And also, I've been sharing a lot of the Northern Beaches Council uh, uploads to LinkedIn. Um, I'm very avid in my sharing. Um, so, you know, it's all about getting the message out there. And is that possibly a way that you can run your business? You can market your business by jumping onto, you know, these social media platforms. Is that going to be a cheaper alternative than uh, branching out um, and spending a bit more money, but it might be worth spending that more money. So they're the big questions you need to ask yourself. Okay, that's it from me. We've got plenty more webinars coming up in this series. It's been great to have you back. Thanks so much for spending your last hour with us and a tremendous thanks to Northern Beaches Council. And you know what? I'm hankering for a good coffee. So I'm going to head over this weekend and I'm going to get myself not a cup, I'm going to get myself a bucket, a big bucket of coffee, and I'm going to sit in some beautiful park up your way or perhaps on the beach. I haven't seen the beach for such a long time. And I'm just going to put my straw into my coffee and look like the biggest weirdo on the northern beaches. But I don't care because I'm that desperate for coffee. So, look, allow me to pass you back to Deb Kent. Massive thanks for turning up. Tremendous thanks to Northern Beaches Council. I look forward to seeing you back soon. I'm Lyndon Regina, signing out from the Australian Taxation Office. See you next time. Thanks, Lyndon, and look forward to seeing you at the weekend and certainly encouraging people to come over and visit. So great to see you on the beaches. Um, yes, so this is actually the second last in our series of eight webinars. So we've got one next Tuesday on becoming an employer. And as we've mentioned, all of these have been recorded and are being put up on our website. So should get this one up in the next day or two and we'll send a link to all of those recordings then so you can hopefully refresh. Um, and if you missed anything, go back in and we'll also be sending out um, email details for Lyndon um, generic email address if you have any specific questions that you didn't get to ask today so I hope to see you at next week's webinar and thanks again for taking the time to come along today thanks everyone bye